Hey guys, how's it going? It's Andy from Magoo Investing. Happy Wednesday. This is actually going to be take two of trying to record this because last time I got through a 30 minute recording session and I didn't hit the record button. So let's try this again. So yesterday I did not end up actually recording a video. I was working on some other things. And one of the main things I was focusing on uh, was I'm starting a second channel. When I started this first channel, kind of the idea behind it was to help people, uh, younger people, mainly going into the college ages, uh, start investing in the stock market and be able to plan for their future. And while the channel has done very well recently, it has kind of evolved into mainly focusing on people that are already investing in the stock market and me giving my opinions on different stocks. So I'm going to be starting this second channel to talk about kind of the basics, mainly focus on financial education, like budgeting, uh, stuff like that, and then focus on the intro to investing. So if that is something you're interested in, or you just want to see more content from me, or you just want to support me, uh, I'll link that above right now. And I really appreciate it if you go over to that channel and hit the subscribe button, because I will be posting uh, more content on there in the upcoming weeks. So today's video, I wanted to talk about some IPOs from 2019. There's been a lot of hype about some companies, especially stuff like DoorDash and Airbnb that are expected to IPO this week uh, and going into early 2021. So I wanted to take a step back and look at some of the top IPOs from 2019. When I think of 2019 IPOs, I pretty much only think about Uber and Lyft. But looking at the list of the stocks that I had to pick from, there's some really exciting companies in there. And I think a lot of them have fantastic growth opportunities going into 2021. So I'm going to talk about five of these stocks and talk about how I feel about them for long term investments. Just a reminder that if I'm talking about a stock that you're not as excited about, there are timestamps in the description below if you'd like to bounce around to a stock that you're actually interested in. So before getting started, I do have to say that I'm not a licensed financial advisor and this is not financial advice. Anything you hear in this video is just me giving my own opinions on the stock market and you need to do your own research for making any investment decisions. Also, if you've been enjoying these videos, I really appreciate it with that like and subscribe button as it would help my channel out a lot. Thank you all for 7,000 subscribers and let's hop right into it with the first stock, which is going to be Chewy, ticker symbol CHWY. Currently, Chewy is trading for $78.50 and it's up 170% on the year. It's going to be the first time that I've actually mentioned Chewy on this channel. More than when I talked about GameStop having their new investor, which is going to be the co-founder of Chewy, uh, who took a 10% stake in the company. And I had to do a little bit of research on who he was, but now I'm actually going to be talking about his company. So Chewy, for those of you that don't know, is an online pet supply company that actually released earnings yesterday, which is always a fantastic thing when I'm looking to do a video on a company and the earnings come out the day before because it gives a lot of new information and it gives me the most up-to-date kind of takes and opinions on the stock, which is how I actually base my opinions. The stock jumped after posting better than expected loss of only 33 million. Their net sales increased by 45% and their average users increased by 40% overall. I expected this to be a boost from the pandemic as kind of the joke has been, you know, you're staying at home more, you might as well adopt a dog or something like that. But the numbers that I actually found is that adoptions are down from last year and it's the number of fostering uh, has gone up significantly, which is great because it helps get animals out of shelters, but it is not actually the result that I was kind of expecting. But the company has been expanding their business recently. One of the areas that they've added is that you can uh, fill prescriptions online for your animals. This has given them another revenue source, which is always a good sign. In October, the company announced that they would be having telehealth services that allows pet owners to contact vets uh, and should be out relatively soon. I thought this was a genius idea. And then when I found out that it's free for people that are part of their auto ship program, I was very impressed. The auto ship program is basically a reoccurring payment uh, for buying stuff like pet food uh, that you're going to need to be buying on a regular basis anyway. So it brings in reoccurring payments for the company uh, and allows the users to actually get access to uh, be able to talk to vets if they need to, especially during a pandemic where people aren't as likely uh, to want to go outside and talk to a vet. I think this is a very smart thing. I'm not sure how it's going to be impacting their bottom line, but I think it's a very exciting uh, initiative that they've been starting and it seems very smart. So looking at their revenue, they have posted an increase in revenue every quarter since they've gone public. And as previously mentioned, the company is not profitable because they did have a net loss of $33 million in the last quarter. But the trend is going in the right direction. And the company actually has a much higher gross margin than I was really expecting. That number just shows how much of an upsell that they're selling their products for. And for a company that's selling products uh, at a retail space, I was not expecting them to have higher margins than I really saw. Currently, their gross margin is 24%, which is much higher than I was kind of expecting. And so overall, I'm a big fan of the business. They seem to be increasing in size rapidly and increasing services that are bringing more people to the site. And their 40% increase in active users is very attractive. Um, and while I was worried a little bit about the competition with stuff like Petco, PetSmart, uh, even Amazon, it appears like they're doing very well during the pandemic. And with the services that they've been adding, I'm expecting them to only continue to increase in size over time. So let's hop on over the charts and I'll talk about what I see there with Chewy, to symbol CHWY. 
All right, so here we are looking at Chewy stock, ticker symbol CHWY. As you can see, it's been on an incredible tear so far uh, going into 2020. This has been a stock that has been respecting the 50-day moving average, which is the purple uh, line going up here. And usually that means that a stock is moving very quickly. And we have seen that with how the stock uh, is performing year to date. And so looking at the charts, there's not a lot that I'm actually seeing, uh, partially because it's just steadily gone up for a while now. And whenever you have uh, just constant movement in one direction, it doesn't allow the stock to determine where it wants to stop as a support or resistance. So I'm going to chart out this area as being important, but I think the best play if you want to go into something like a Chewy is to uh, play the trend. And the trend has been the stock respecting the 50-day moving average. And so right now that is sitting at $66. Uh, where the stock is at 76, so it still has a way to go to catch up to that. But uh, at this point, there's not a lot of uh, uh, support and resistances that I would look at and be like, oh yeah, this is a definitive play. This is probably the best opportunity I have. Uh, this is a stock that's just been moving up significantly in 2020, going from lows of $20 up to around $80. Uh, so it's been moving aggressively. And just if it came down and it caught that 50-day moving average, I would consider that a buying opportunity. Uh, but right now, I think it's a little bit overextended. Okay, next up, I want to talk about Peloton, ticker symbol PTON. Currently, Peloton is trading for $118, and it's up 317% on the year. We have just passed the one-year anniversary of the Peloton ads that swept the internet as everyone was talking about how horrible of an ads they were, uh, how they were kind of sexist, and stuff like that. And now we are a year later, and this is one of the most popular companies out there and a stock that has tripled in value uh, in the past year. And so it's really interesting to see how uh, investor sentiment can change over time because going into the end of 2019, early 2020, was not thought of very highly, and now it's one of the most popular stocks out there. Uh, yesterday, Peloton fell slightly after Apple announced the release date for their Fitness Plus service that is going to be competing with Peloton's $13 a month service. But the Peloton CEO came out a couple months ago and said that it was actually a good thing because having a $2 trillion uh, business come into your industry and showing that it's a very important uh, industry to focus on is going to be a positive overall. Also, he mentioned that uh, they're not really targeting the same people. While they do have a service that uh, is relatively similar, this is not the money maker for the company. And so as you'd expect, they've had huge revenue spikes in 2020 during the pandemic, uh, and they've had positive net income for the past two quarters with that increase in revenue. Uh, and if they have as solid of a holiday season as I kind of expect them to do, uh, they might have a fully profitable 2020, which would be just a big thing to point to uh, for investors going forward. Part of that comes from their really high gross margins of 45%. As I mentioned, gross margin is how much they're selling their product for minus the actual cost to actually make the product. So 45%, it makes sense. These are very expensive machines starting at $1,500. So it makes sense that their margins are so high. But recently there have been problems with their uh, supply chain and they've had some people uh, that have ordered their products that have been experiencing very long delays actually cancel their orders. So this might be a detriment to the company and it might result in them not having a fully profitable 2020, but I don't see this as being a long-term problem for the company. Looking at the last earnings report, there have been some crazy numbers from their sales and improved uh, subscription revenue. Some of the parts that really stuck out to me is that in the last quarter, they had almost $160 million in subscription revenue. That's a 133% increase year over year. Uh, and with that digital app that Apple is going to be competing with, they did see a 382% in users in the past year. So you've had some massive growth there. Well, Apple is likely to take part uh, of that market share. I expect that product to continue to grow going forward. So the numbers that I found was very impressive for the company and something that really stuck with me has to do with their retention rate. This is something that similar to what we saw with Chewy with the incentives for the uh, auto ship program that have people uh, continually pay kind of like a subscription to get their products. Peloton with a retention rate is a huge thing because the subscription revenue is going to be a huge source of growth for them going forward. And the numbers that I found for the past 12 months is that they've had a retention rate of 92%. So people are buying into the product and they're continuing to use the product over time. And so I don't think 2020 was a fluke year for something like a Peloton. I think they were in a great spot to do well. People have seen the high quality products that they have. I think 2020 is going to be maybe not as good of a year, maybe not 317% increase, but I think 2021 is going to be a great year for Peloton. Let's hop into the charts and I'll talk about what I see there. Okay, so here we are looking at Peloton, ticker symbol PTON, and looking at the charts, while I don't have anything actually uh, on the charts, it's just the naked chart, I think it looks really good for a couple reasons. One of the main things is I think the company needed a pullback of some kind, and we've seen uh, two major pullbacks. This is the first vaccine news from uh, late October, and anytime you have the stay-at-home stocks that it 
gets news about the vaccine, it's going to fall. And so that happened, and then earnings happened, and there have been some problems with uh, the supply problems. That has pushed the stock down a little bit. But anytime you see a move down, I want to see how long it takes for it to get bought back up. Uh, and it's been steadily bought back up for the past couple couple weeks at this point. And so this tells me that the demand for the stock is still there. And so while it might be at a discount, uh, it's definitely not a stock that people are uh, expecting to fall at this point. It's been steadily increasing. And now that we're getting a bullish move where it's over the 50 day moving average after it has fallen from uh, the middle of October to the beginning of November, uh, it's starting to push up and it's starting to look very bullish. So if I was long-term bullish, I mean, which I am on this stock, uh, the charts are telling me that this could be a pretty good buying opportunity as it is a bullish indicator crossing over the 50 day moving average. Uh, the 200, which is sitting way down here, uh, is still not in play. Uh, it's sitting at around $67 uh, when the current price is at 117. So yeah, nothing you can learn from that, but I think the crossing over of the uh, being above the 50 day moving average is very bullish considering the stock has been uh, above that line since uh, April of this year. So I think that's very bullish for Peloton overall. All right, next up, I want to talk about Beyond Meat, ticker symbol BYND, that is currently trading for $140 and it's up 86% on the year. I've been asked a lot recently how I feel about Beyond Meat, uh, so I wanted to put it back into uh, another video. And so first off, Beyond Meat is the leader in a sector that's only going to continue to increase in size over time. When you compare it to some of its competitors on the actual meat market, I wanted to look at gross margin because as of right now, the plant-based meat products market is relatively small, but it's going to continue to increase over time. Looking at meat producer Tyson, their gross margins are only 10% and Beyond Meats is 40%. As we go forward, that margin is expected to increase over time as research and development is going to result uh, in lower and lower production costs for these products. So right now, the future looks very bright for Beyond Meat. They've also been signing major deals with companies like Starbucks, Yum Brands, and McDonald's. And that McDonald's one is going to be the one that people are watching going forward. Uh, McDonald's announced they're releasing the McPlant, which is their uh, plant-based meat burger. And while Beyond Meat is going to be supplying the products for Canada, it hasn't been announcing who's going to be doing it for the U.S. yet. And based on the fact that they haven't announced to, it to be uh, Beyond Meat at this point, probably not going to be them. But investors and the market are kind of watching that because that's going to be a huge source of revenue for the company if they do actually get that contract. Uh, that contract is valued to be uh, at around $300 million per year, and their current 12-month trailing revenue is $400 million. So you can see how big of a boost uh, $300 million would be to a, an annual revenue that's currently sitting at four hundred. So that would be a huge boost to the company. Uh, and this is a great stock in a market that's only expected to increase in size over time. And that's very exciting. And for someone like myself that is very focused on the environment, the fact that it's going to be lowering carbon emissions is very attractive to me. And so looking for a long-term investment, I think this is a great opportunity. The stock has not done as well as maybe you would have expected. A lot of the places that the company would have been selling to have been closed because of the lockdown. So I think 2021 will be a, a major growth year for the company. And I think the future is very bright for a company like Beyond Meat. So let's hop on over the charts and talk about what I see with Beyond Meat, ticker symbol BYND. Okay, so here we are looking at Beyond Meat, ticker symbol BYND. And Beyond Meat has had a roller coaster of a, a life history on the stock market. You've had uh, the incredible momentum that it had right after it IPO'd, going up to highs of $240, then it fell back down to the $70 mark, uh, and then it went pretty horizontal. And this is a stock that I think the market is going to continue to expand. And so this is not really a stock that I would look at uh, and buy in specifically because of the charts, just because I think this is a stock you buy in because of the idea of the growth of uh, whatever business they're a part of. But right now, I think it's looking pretty decent. I thought this was a, a decent support at the $126 mark, uh, and it's bounced off pretty well since that point. And so it is off the highs of almost $200 just a couple months ago, uh, and I'm thinking it looks pretty good. So if I was wanting to buy in, I would consider this a pretty good opportunity based off of the recent support, the fact that it is uh, down from recent highs of $200, uh, and overall I think it just looks really solid. And so the company is going to continue to grow, and I think the stock chart looks good enough uh, where it has room to grow to the upside. So I'm very bullish on the charts for Beyond Meat, ticker symbol BYND. Next up, we're going to be talking about Pinterest, ticker symbol P-I-N-S. Currently Pinterest is trained for $70, and it's up 275% on the year. Pinterest was an IPO that when it first came out, wasn't really a huge fan of it. It was in a steady decline for a long time. And then kind of the switch kind of flipped and the trend changed. And then we had an upward trend and I wasn't really sure where the stock was going to go. It was bouncing around between this channel and I thought it was a decent swing trade, but not as great of a long-term investment. But the second half of 2020 has been a really big breakout for the company. Uh, part of the reason we saw that had to do with snap earnings. 
As a result of the pandemic, ad spending was down significantly and it wasn't really sure if that was going to be bouncing back anytime soon. And then when Snapchat posted their revenue uh, and showed that the ad revenue was actually really coming back and it was better than expected, all these social media stocks jumped because of that. So you had that boost and then Pinterest earnings came out and everyone was very impressed with the numbers that they posted. The favorite number that I saw was that they saw a big boost in their active users, which is now sitting at 442 million monthly average users. And the company said that they expect their revenue to grow by 60% compared to last year in their next earnings report. So this is a company that is expanding in size. And one of the things that has really stuck out to me is that this is a great place for uh, advertisers to actually spend. When you look at a lot of these social media places, you've seen a lot of boycotts this year. There's a lot of negativity, especially behind uh, stuff like politics. When you look at Pinterest, Pinterest has been built in a way that uh, integrates ads into it in a positive way. I've never heard someone look at Pinterest and be upset that they saw an ad. Whereas if you go on Twitter and you see an ad, I've never really been happy about that. The whole point about Pinterest is that people are going on to the site to find ideas or find actual products. There's something where it's like 80% of users that use Pinterest on a regular basis have actually bought a product off of the site, which is not something you can say about something like a Twitter. So for a company that's looking to spend, I think Pinterest is a great place for people to do that. And as a result, they're going to be seeing explosive growth in the next couple quarters. As I mentioned, 60% expected revenue growth uh, going in the next quarter. So as of right now, I think Pinterest is a stock that I don't fully understand the business uh, just because I don't actually use it. But everyone I know that uses Pinterest absolutely loves it. And it seems like a great place for advertisers to be continuing to spend. I don't have to worry about some of the negativity. So let's hop on over the charts and I'll talk about what I see with Pinterest, ticker symbol P-I-N-S. Okay, so here we are with a pretty hectic chart with Pinterest, ticker symbol P-I-N-S. Uh, this was a stock that I was playing based off of the charts for a while. Uh, you had this downward channel and then it broke out into an upward channel. And then you had to move up after the snap earnings. Uh, then it kind of waited for a couple days until its earnings report. It shot up, sold off, and then got bought back up immediately and has been pushing up to all-time highs of $72. Uh, so this has been a stock that has been on a tear. You can see just how fast uh, the 50-day moving average is pretty flat for a while, and then it's just gone steadily up since that point. So based off the charts, this is not a great deal considering it is at an all-time high. Uh, but based off of the momentum of the company and the long-term trajectory of what I've been seeing with the numbers, it looks pretty solid. So if I was looking to buy for 5, 10, 15 years, I would be fine buying it at this point. But if I'm looking for a shorter-term trade, not as attractive. So I'm going to set an alert back down to this gap fill because uh, gap fills are usually used as supports in the future. So if it ever comes down to that mark, I think it'll be an interesting buying opportunity. Uh, I do have the last <laughs> major move up as a an alert down to the $35 mark. And Hopefully it never gets down to that point, but if it comes down to the 55, I will consider that a buying opportunity, but right now I think it's a little too overextended for me. Let's finish up this video talking about two of the most anticipated IPOs of 2019 with Lyft and Uber. Well, I think both of them are decent. I do like Lyft a lot more than I do Uber, so I'm going to be talking about it exclusively in today's video. So Lyft is currently trading for almost $47 and it's up 8% on the year. And so Lyft has been on a tear in the past month as a result of some very positive news as a result of the elections with Prop 22. Uh, and they've had some recent upgrades from analysts that have pushed the stock higher this week. With the election, everyone was watching Prop 22. For those of you who don't know, Prop 22 was put on the ballot from a lot of lobbying from companies like Lyft, Uber, DoorDash, Postmates, uh, and other companies like that. One of the problems is that AB5 was put through in California that was going to classify the workers for these types of companies as employees. And going from contractor to employee would result in much higher costs for these companies that they're gonna to have to actually pay them uh, much more than they were in the past. And so these companies were uh, putting a lot of money, it was actually the most spent bill in the history of the state of California to try to make sure that they stayed as contractors. And when that did pass, it has resulted in them staying as contractors. Uh, and there was, for a while, it looked like Lyft was actually gonna be pulling out of California if that didn't actually pass. So that was a huge boost to companies like Lyft and Uber. Uh, but between the two, I think Lyft is in a significantly better spot, even though Uber has done much better on the year. And mainly the reason comes from Uber has been getting a lot of money from the delivery services. And while Uber Eats seems like a pretty solid business because it has boosted their revenue significantly uh, as the actual ride sharing aspect of their business has shrunk, I'm not a huge fan of it. I saw some numbers. I can't remember what it actually was. I'll have to find it before I post the video. But it showed how much money that they're losing on average per order. And that's not a great thing to me. And while the delivery has actually surpassed uh, the ride sharing part of their business, 
it has widened their loss significantly. And for a company that has been very vocal about wanting to be profitable, this seems like a step in the wrong direction. And so going with a company like Lyft that I think is very simple in the type of business that they're operating, I think is a very positive thing. Also, Lyft has been improving their numbers when it comes to their net loss. And so Lyft seems to be going in the right direction while Uber seems to be aggressively trying to expand into food delivery into a market that has razor thin margins because you are working with restaurants uh, and customers that have an expectation for what the price is gonna be and you can't really gouge the price like you would uh, with a late night Uber. So I think Uber's fine, but I think Lyft is in a significantly better spot when it comes to their finances. Uh, and so they're going to benefit significantly from the reopening process. And for the first time ever, I'm actually gonna say that I'm very bullish on Lyft overall, and I would consider it a buy for a long-term investment. Anytime you get some positive news, whether it be from the vaccine or the reopening process, companies like Lyft are going to spike in price. And so it has recovered a lot in the past month, uh, and I think it has more room to grow. So let's hop on over the charts and wrap up the video talking with Lyft, ticker symbol L-Y-F-T. Okay, here we are looking at Lyft, ticker symbol L-Y-F-T, and this is gonna be the last stock on today's list. And so Lyft has had a really tough time since it IPO'd back in 2019. Uh, it had a lot of hype behind it and then immediately sold off, uh, kind of got su support for a little bit and then has fallen for a while. And it hit pandemic lows uh, right before the uh, Prop 22 vote of around $22, considering it IPO'd uh, and had highs of almost $90 on its first day. That is a huge move down. But since that point, it has been moving aggressively to the upside, uh, as I mentioned, because of the great news that it uh, Prop 22 passed. Uh, also, you have a lot of the reopening process stuff that has been helping the stock out significantly. So right now, I'm seeing the stock as being at a potential resistance just based off of the previous price movement, but this is not a stock that I would not buy into specifically because of this technical analysis. I think this is a stock that is always going to have a lot of movement based off of the news reports because this is a stock that anytime you have anything positive with uh, the vaccine, the reopening process, the stock is going to bounce because of that. So I think there are plenty of catalysts that could push it through a solid resistance like this. So while this is not the best buying opportunity from the technical aspect, I think based off of what we know with the company and how much news comes out about information that could affect the company, I think this is a decent buying opportunity just because I think there aren't many stocks like this for the reopening process that are still at a significant discount. As I mentioned, I think it's a better opportunity than something like an Uber, uh, and I think its books look way better. You have a you have a golden cross down here with a 50 moving over top of the 200, so you have a bullish indicator there. It's just, are you comfortable enough buying into a resistance? Personally, I would say yes to that. So overall, 2019 was an exciting year for IPOs. One of the stocks that did leave off of this list is going to be Zoom. I think Zoom has done incredibly well in 2020 based off of you know, people staying at home. And unlike a lot of these companies that I think will have continued growth going into 2021, I think you're gonna see a huge contraction in their revenue going into 2021 for something like a Zoom. So I decided not to put it on this list, but let me know what your favorite IPO of 2019 was and let me know if there are any IPOs going into 2021 that you're really excited about. Let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching this video. I appreciate all the support and I will see you in the next video.